Welcome. Today this box is going to help us talk about our subject, which is radars. As you've been following along, you'll know that a big part of the upgrade we're doing on Rock Chalk here while she's up on the heart is a complete new electronic system. Some of those components we've already put in. We've gotten the new BNG multifunction display, the wind sensor, this, the speed, depth sensor is already installed as you see. And the last big component of that is in this box, radar. Major manufacturers, Funro, uh, Garmin, Raymarine, and the Navico brands all make radars and they're all very good. But I'm going to focus on the Navico brands, which are BNG, Simrad, and Lorance. Now, in my looking into these brands, it seems that each one of those is tailored towards a specific market. Simrad is really tailored towards the larger uh, powerboat crowd, whereas Lorance is tailored towards the smaller powerboat sort of fishing crowd. And B&G is definitely geared towards the sailing crowd with their um, sail steer software package. Now, all of these components made by these three manufacturers are all NEMA 2000, so they're interchangeable basically. So it doesn't matter whether you get a BNG radar, a Simrad, or a Lawrence radar, they're all going to work with, with each other. So, looking at those three brands, there's a distinct price difference between them. Lawrence for 3NG radar starts out at $1,300. 3NG radar for Simrad and BNG it starts at $1,500. So if they're the same radar, why is there a price difference? Well, there's one major component that you don't get with the Lorance system that you do with the BNG and the Simrad, and that is the radar interface box. Now the radar interface box does one main thing. It allows you to overlay your radar onto your charge charts, as opposed to having to switch to a different screen to view your radar. Now, you can buy the Lorance system and simply add that radar interface box at a later time. It's about $150, $170. So what I did is I've been shopping around and shopping around. And what I was originally going to do was buy a Lorance for the $1,200, get the radar installed since it's got to go up on the mast. And we're going to do that when we redo the rigging here in a couple of weeks and put that radar interface box on at a later time. I'm always searching eBay for deals. So this last week, I actually found a Lawrence 3G radar, brand new, but the box had been opened for $1,000. And if you know anything about marine electronics, it doesn't matter who you buy them from, they're all the same price. I think they have an electronics mafia that ensures that nobody gets a deal. So this was a third party deal. I was able to get that brand new radar for $1,000. That's what's in this box. At the same time, I also found a new but open box radar interface for $75. I actually ended up with the $1,500 radar package for right around $1,100 with shipping. So that's what we're going to do here today. We're going to open up this 3G radar and see what's in the box. So let's get going. Now before we get started, let's talk a little bit about radars. In the Navico brands, you have 3G radar. 4G radar, and the new Halo radar. So what's the difference? They're all digital solid state, they're all low power. The main difference is in how far you're going to get radar information back to the boat. 3G radar gives you information out to about 24 miles. 4G, 36 nautical miles, and the new Halo gives you information out to 48 miles. So as I said earlier, your 3G radar is going to be about starting at $1,300, 
the 4G starts at $1,900, and the new Halo starts at $27. My rationale for getting the 3G is that sailboats don't move that fast, so I think 24 miles of coverage is going to be all right. So with that, let's see what's in the box. In here is your information package. It's got the cutout with your holes for mounting holes. The old what's in the box sheet. Another piece of information and installation and instruction manual. We'll be getting into more on the installation when we're back out at the boat and we've got the mass out of the ground. This particular one comes with a 20 meter cable. When you're looking at these radars, you want to, number one, make sure it comes with the radar cable, because this radar cable is right around $120. And secondly, see how long that radar cable is. Plan out where you're going to put your radar so that you don't have to buy any additional cables. They're not cheap. This is a this is your Ethernet interface cable. This is what goes between your MFD and your radar or your radar interface box. Got another box here. Let's see what's inside it. Big box, mounting screws. Ah, there it is. Get the packaging out of the way here. I'd like to take a break here at the channel from all the action and ask you if you enjoy what you see here on the channel, go ahead and hit that subscription button. We'd really appreciate it. Also, give us a thumbs up. The positive feedback is always enjoyed. Now let's go ahead and talk about that radar interface box. Mentioned earlier, I got the radar interface box off of eBay as well. And here it is. It came from a third party purchase, but it's brand new. There we are. So, exactly what is it and what does it do? Some plastic covers. Here we are. This is your R110 radar interface box. Look up here on the bottom side of it. You have connections for your SIM net, your networking, which is Ethernet, and your radar. This is where your wiring comes from your radar unit into this unit. You'll match up the colored wires with the spots here on the connector and plug in your network cable in. Then your network cable will go from here up to your MFD. And this is what allows your chart plotter to overlay the charts with the radar information. One other thing that you need to make that happen is a gyro compass, which I've covered earlier and it's already mounted on Rock Chalk. Now, if you don't have one of these and you just got the regular Lorance 3G radar unit, 
This would just simply be wired to power and would go into your back of your unit which you would have to look at your radar screen as a separate screen. You wouldn't have that information overlaid onto your charts. So, I'd like to thank everybody for stopping in today as we went over the information here presented in what I'm calling Radar 101. Thanks. With the weather here being cold and rainy and sometimes below freezing, I took a break from the yard to get caught up on a little sewing. I had some extra zippers, so I sewed them on the side panels I had already made for the bimini. Along with that, I had purchased some solar panels specifically to charge USB devices. What I decided to do was to take these panels and sew them on the top of the bimini using velcro so i could take them on and off very easily this would allow me to charge and use uh, usb powered devices while in the cockpit not requiring any battery power or running of the motor or anything as a convenience and as a safety precaution if i lost all power so here you can see where i'm sewing on the Velcro onto the top of the Bimini, and here's the final placement for those pieces. Well, that's the end of another vlog this week. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, kudos. As always, thanks for stopping in, and if you haven't done so, go ahead and hit that subscription button. We're really trying to grow the channel here. We're just a small informational output for you cruisers out there, but Give us a thumbs up and hit that subscription button. Thanks a lot.